What's up guys, it is Wizzle, and today I am very excited to bring to you my summary and overall thoughts and synopsis of Venom the Duck. I also have a gift that I hope that all of the Venom the Duck users in the community can use to kind of get to know them, get to love them, and hopefully you can finish some really awesome content in this game with it. Um, I will have a link in the description of what that is. If this is your first time here, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. This way you can stay up to date. This is the first of hopefully many series to come. I took a different approach with Venom of the Duck and I wanted to be able to show you what he can do without all of these crazy buffs. And the first, I would say 90% of the content that I've shared thus far this week has only been no buffs. And today I have a really cool surprise to show you at the end of this video. So stay tuned, you're gonna wanna see it. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple of different recipes for the buffs that really make Venom the Duck shine. Let's get into the recipes. I wanna show you guys what um, this is all about. Venom the Duck is a customizable champ. He is so customizable. He's like the Swiss army knife of the cosmic class. He can do so much with so little needed. He doesn't need synergies to be good. Are there great synergies for him? Yes, there are tons of them. Does he need his buffs to be great? No. Will they make him amazing? Yes, they will. There's so many different ways you can mix them up too. I'll show you today a couple of different ways in which you can use the buffs to your advantage, but also when you're not getting what you want because it is a little bit RNG related, how to circumvent that. Let's get into the recipes, here we go. So the first recipe that I wanna share with you guys is one that I shared in my most recent video, which I call Combo Crazy, and it is a mixture of two buffs and that's it. Perfect block and power gain. So power gain times six, and this is gonna give you plus 225% overall power gain rate for whenever you hit, that is nuts. Perfect block chance, 85%. And there's a very specific reason there's four perfect blocks here. That's so you have enough time to chain in three hits, a medium, light, medium, and then do a full five hit combo right after. This one is built for you to be able to start a fight, have the buffs ready to go, parry, go right in, medium, light, medium, and then five hit combo, medium, light, 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 medium, SP2 immediately, because you will have built up enough power to hit your SP2. And guess what, once you hit your SP2, those final hits of it are still gonna generate a little bit of power, but more importantly, hopefully, you will have landed a toxic armor or two. And what that's gonna do is give the opponent a huge vulnerability, especially if they have a high armor rating. The next one is called two by two. And this one is my jack of all trades, master of none recipe build. And it consists of two furies, two precision buffs, two power gains, two regens, and two perfect blocks. I omitted armor and you can swap out one perfect block for one armor so you have a little bit of everything if you would like. But I have found that having two perfect blocks is more valuable than having the enhanced armor. Having two of each gives you a nice well-rounded build and it gives you a significant attack boost. The next one is very similar to the first one. It's called Namor style and it is modeled after Namor's gameplay. Three furies, four four power gains, three perfect blocks. Very simple, but not easy to do. And most people would avoid using something like this. A lot of people don't like to tag in any perfect block, but you need to understand that the perfect block has its purpose. There's a reason it's in the game. So three furies, that's gonna give you probably almost triple your base attack. Now, the numbers that I have on this document are based on a 565 five-star character, so keep that in mind. They may not be comparable to yours. Power gain times four, so four power gains gonna give you 170% on top. That's nuts. It's not quite what I have on the combo crazy, but it is almost there. So, couple more hits and you're back to an SP3. Three furies. Now, the idea behind this build is very key. And this, this same concept is gonna go into the following build as well, the suicide build. But what you wanna do is you're not gonna be using your SP1 or SP2 that much after you have the build set in your quest. And the idea is go ahead and fire off your SP3, get your buffs out, and then build to another SP3 and you want to launch that SP3 with the Furies active. It is critical that you do that. Do not let the SP3 fire after they expire. Now that might sound counterintuitive, so you kinda wanna time it a little bit. You wanna fire it at the tail end, but you want to have a Fury boost on that SP3 so you have an increased damage rating on your SP3. It's not a very heavy hitting attack on its own, but if you have three Furies and it's almost triple your base attack, it's going to hit pretty hard. Now, suicide build, a lot of people have been asking about this. I hope to counter the argument that Venom the Duck is suicide friendly. A lot of people don't think that he is because the way to build up his aberration charge is through your SP1 and a repeated use of it. That's not true. 
There's another way to do it. You use the SP3. The SP3, when he's awakened, also will build your aberration charge. But there's more to this story. That still doesn't explain why he's not suicide friendly. A lot of people argue that anytime you fire off an SP2, which is going to be your heavy hitting special, you're going to have recoil. Well, you can out regen the recoil if you do it right. I don't recommend doing that because then you're going to have to put about four regen buffs into your RNA bank. But what I do recommend is going the Namor style with a little bit of a different approach to the buffs that you select. So three Furies, one Precision, four Power Gains, and two Regeneration buffs. And the reason you want two and not one, I normally believe that one is enough because you're going to be firing so many SP3s off and you're going to have the random addition of a regen pop up throughout the fights incrementally. You don't know when they're going to happen, it is random, but if you have the poison on you 100% of the time, it is going to reduce the health regenerated by approximately 30%, so it's going to slow your regen down a little bit. Normally, with two, you're getting about 17% regeneration back after the buffs have completed their cycle, so it will be reduced to roughly just over the rate of one, so keep that in mind. That's why I have two. If you don't like that and you want faster regeneration or it's just not working out for you, take the precision off and put that into regen. So. Four power gains, that is key. You have to have four power gains for this recipe to work. The rest, a little bit more customizable for you. You have so much attack from the suicides already. You can take one fury off if you like, put it into regen. Again, these recipes are tailored for me and my liking, but you can make them your own. And that's the best part about Venom the Duck. He is so customizable, he's tailored to you. And that's what I really love about this champ. He's underexposed. I don't want to say he's underutilized. I believe he's very underexposed and that's what I hope to kind of get this out and share that he can be used in a lot of different circumstances. So a couple more recipes to share. The tank. I don't use this one very often but there have been a couple of paths where I have used it and it's worked out extremely well. Four armor ups, one regen, and five perfect blocks. So this is the tank and I really like this because if you parry your stun is now longer as well so you can counter very easily. The next one is probably one of my favorites as well. I call it crit damage baby. Fury times four, precision times four, and two power gains. Nothing else. So this is kind of just straight to the wall. You want to hit them hard and you want to hit them fast, but you also want to bleed them out. That's the key here. You want to be able to crit as much as possible and you want those crits to hit hard and you want those bleeds to have as high of a tick as possible. The next one, brute force. Six Furies, just nuts. So again, you can put 10 in here. I don't recommend doing it because they're going to reduce their uh, potency, each one you put in by about 10%. Fury times six is gonna give you 9,785.02 attack. Precision times two, 1,284 crit rating and two power gain, so 95% on top. Very similar to the previous build, but it's focusing on just the attack, not as much as on the crit. You can throw another one somewhere else if you want to. If you want a little bit more power gain, take that precision out. But you want to keep those six into attack. It's not relying on the bleeds as much. And then the last here, Labyrinth of Legends, the survivor build. Fury times three, precision times two, one power gain, one regen, and three perfect block. And the reason I have three in perfect block, limber in Labyrinth. There was recently a video by Hector, which I thought was awesome, where you can kind of get around the limber of Labyrinth, but the timing is so small that not every champ can do it easily. So I do recommend extending your perfect block chance a bit more. This will give you plenty of time, plenty of time, after limber has expired to continue to parry throughout the rest of the fight. You don't want to do that with every opponent, but you definitely will have enough time to rely on a parry if you need to. One regen is all you need for Labyrinth. Those fights are long. They're really, really long. You're gonna have more regeneration buffs proc throughout the fight. Don't worry about having four regens and you don't need to worry about power gain as much in Labyrinth either. You want to be able to control what special you're throwing more precisely. So the rest should go into Precision and Fury. Some could argue you could put it into Armor Up. I disagree with that sentiment only because if you get hit by somebody in there, you're pretty much going down. You don't want to get hit. <laughs> That's the key to Labyrinth of Legends. I do have an attack build as well. The attack build is a little bit leaning more towards um, some of the attack enhancements, but not it's not that different from this build. So four Furies, three Precisions, one Power Gain, one regeneration buff and one perfect block. I would recommend using this only if you're comfortable and you've already taken a path or two in Labyrinth um, and maybe you just need to finish it exploring it and you want to try to duck out. Uh, perfect block is not, you're not going to be relying on parry too much. I would just use this for emergencies because your timing is going to be very limited. You're going to have enough time to combo out of a parry, but the window is still small with that 25% chance. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So I want to talk to you about a couple of quick strengths and weaknesses that Venom the Duck has. So first his weaknesses. 
So this is something to keep in mind, some places that you want to be careful if you do take him. Um, he has no immunities. Venom the Duck is not immune to anything. The only potential benefit that he has is the armor up buff, and it's time-based, so you can't rely on it for the entire fight. It's not like Warlock's armor up where if it expires, it automatically pops back up. So you got to be careful when you're on a node or a path that has a constant incinerator, poison, or bleed. It's not really going to do you any good. Second weakness is any champ who nullifies, especially if they are going to inflict damage on each nullification. So a champion like Dormammu, Doctor Strange is really annoying to fight with Venom the Duck. You can get around it. It's just a slow fight. There are ways around it with your toxic armor. You can do a bit more damage. You can also bleed. However, your buffs are not going to enhance your abilities whatsoever. Again, these are his weaknesses, but I have already shown that he can do a lot without his buffs, and that's the important thing to know. He's more of a versatile champ than a one-lane champ, which is what I love about him. And that's going to segue into his strengths. His first strength that I love is his versatility. He can adapt to just about any circumstance. He is great for a lot of Path 7 options in Alliance War. He is also great for some other nodes, Path 4 is probably my favorite to take him on because there's this one particular node that has extended buff duration. And a lot of people like to place champs with buffs there. I see Hyperion there sometimes. You'll see the champion there sometimes. You, you know, you see some diversity throws there with like Phoenix or whatever. But it doesn't matter what buffs they have. It matters what buffs you're going to give them because you can give them a toxic armor buff and that buff is now extended too by up to 40%. And if you have a max SIG, Venom the Duck, so SIG 200, Venom the Duck, that's 24 seconds plus an additional 40% of that. So it's pretty much guaranteed as soon as you have a toxic armor up, they're dead. Just hit them a few times and they're done. Also a great counter to debuff immune because he can also place the toxic armor and he can degen. The next point is he can degenerate robots. Omega Red is known for being able to degen almost every champ in the game, but he's weak against robots. He can't get those uh, death spores up very fast where Venom the Duck can. He has no weakness against robots. He can degen them all day long. He is also strong against champs with a high armor. That's that's pretty much like his biggest strength. If they have a high armor rating, they don't have to have an armor up. But if they have a high armor rating, like Thanos, who's currently the highest armor rating in the entire game, is our AQ boss. Think about that. He's great for AQ. He's great for any champion with a high armor rating. But if they have an armor up on top, which enhances that rating, usually that armor up will enhance it significantly. I think about the Colossus buff that's about to come out. Oof. That's not going to be fun for Colossus if you have a good Venom the Duck. He is absolutely insane against bleed vulnerable champs. He is a damage over time champ, hands down one of the strongest. Not the strongest, but one of the strongest in the game. But you have to keep in mind, he is also really strong against bleed immune champions. Because of the other points that I just made. Because robots don't have any weakness to his degen. It has no shorter duration. You get a five and a half second degen. It's a 25% reduction in the rating of damage compared to his bleed, but it's still a full degen. So you got to keep that in mind. Additionally, most robots have a significantly high either armor up or high armor rating by default. So they're already going into the fight in a weakened state compared to him. So all you do is fire a toxic armor and they're done. Those are the strengths and the weaknesses for Venom the Duck. All right, so my favorite part. So I had said that Venom the Duck is customizable. He's absolutely customizable to no end. And this is where you can really tinker and make your fights what he needs them to be. Synergies. Synergies can really make or break the power of Venom the Duck. And I'm going to give you an example at the very end of this video. So stay tuned for a really fun video, really fun fight. And I'm very excited to share it with you. So the first synergy, and I have a few to share, and I'm going to share these in a specific way. So they're not in batches of five, they're in batches of three, because the way that Venom the Duck works is you cookie cut him the way that you need him. You don't just ply all. It's not like the Blade Trinity with Ghost Rider and Sparky, where you have those two. Those are the two you use 90% of the time. He works very differently. So you pick the synergy that works best for you at that moment for what your opponents are, what your path is, whatever the case might be. So let's kick it off. Genetic Code, Extended Bleeds. This is a big synergy. This one is where you're going to get a lot of damage um, out of Venom the Duck. So the members of this synergy are Venom the Duck, Symbiote Supreme, and Blade. And what you're going to get for having just these three members on your team is Venom the Duck is now 15% Nullify and Fate Seal resistant. And that's not really all that great, but it's, you know, hey, it's a little bit of a help. But the big wins are below. 18% 
bleed debuff duration for Venom the Duck specifically. Those are solo buffs just for Venom the Duck. He's greedy. He's the only one who gets buffed from that. Symbiote Supreme also gets um, a buff on this synergy. Each time a stagger's duration expires, it has a 25% chance to reapply itself. That is very, very awesome. And then the last piece, which is the most important one, is all symbiotes increase the duration of all bleed debuff effects by 20%. So you're looking at a 10 second bleed. By default, it's five and a half seconds. It is now a 10 second bleed with just these two additional team members on your team. Just these two. All right, next synergy, Cosmic Supremacy. Team members are Venom the Duck, Black Bolt, and Ronin. This is a very old synergy, but a very good one. A lot of people use this synergy for Hyperion, and you can stack this synergy on top of itself. It's not unique. Really, really good. And what it does for Venom the Duck, Cosmic Champions gain 30% duration for all of their Fury, Precision, Cruelty, which doesn't apply, and Armor Up buffs. So three of the four buffs that this will apply to, huge benefit. He also will get... 115 critical damage rating. So for every crit, it's going to do just a little bit more damage. The next synergy, a similar, but slightly different one. And I tend to prefer this one over the previous one. Now this is a unique synergy, so it does not stack. However, it's a little bit more broad. So this one is called Cosmic Power. Venom the Duck, Captain America Infinity War, and Gamora. And what this does is Cosmic Champions increase their buff duration by 25%. This applies to all of the buffs. Every single one of them. Doesn't matter. Even ones you receive from other synergies. If it's a buff and it's time-based, the duration is now 25% longer. Genetic Recode. This one's universal. This one I use quite frequently. I really love this synergy for longer questing. Venom the Duck, Howard the Duck, and Domino. What Howard the Duck does for you is every RNA banked buff that you have, and you can get up to 10, you get a 2% attack increase for every buff in the bank. So by the time you have filled up the RNA bank up to 10, you now have a 20% attack boost. So one synergy, 20% attack. The second one is Domino. Now this one is what got me started on thinking about how to use this champ a little differently. And this is genetic recode probability. And it increases Venom the Duck's ability accuracy during special attacks by 35%. Why would you want to do that during special attacks? That's an excellent question. I asked myself this because 35% didn't add up to me. And the reason it didn't add up to me is because the only special attack that I wanted to use when I was learning this character was the SP2. And it has a 75% chance to inflict the toxic armor. And then it dawned on me. It has nothing to do with the toxic armor. It has everything to do with what I'm about to share in the final synergy. The best synergy team that I have found for Venom the Duck. It is the absolute most used team that I have for him. Um, great for any circumstance. If you want to bleed a champion, you are going to bleed a champion, even if you don't have a critical buff. So this is the Shield Agents Synergy. And I've listed this one as five team members. You can do it with three. You can do it with four. You can do it with all five. It starts with Venom the Duck. The next member is Hawkeye. The third member is Quake. The fourth member is Quake. The fifth member is also Quake. And this is just a flat ability accuracy enhancement synergy. This is a very old synergy, but an excellent synergy to use. And what you're going to see after you put these members on your team is Venom the Duck starts bleeding people out like Carnage. He starts bleeding people out like Nick Fury, just not as powerful, but fast. And he's hitting bleeds with almost every strike that's critical. Absolutely nuts. And my surprise that I want to share with you guys today is how fast something like this can actually work in your favor. If you really want to bleed somebody out and you have this synergy, well, why not test it out on Realm of Legends Wolverine and see how fast we can take them down. No suicides, no boosts. No reverse healing. 